Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you may remember that at the beginning of August, I did a review of these Miniware digital tweezers. And at the time, I did mention that I thought the, the little signal generator that's built in here might be quite handy uh, to use as a, a bit of a fault finding tool um, in the, the uh, audio stages of, a, of an amplifier. And that's something I've been thinking out to have a go at. So that's really what this video is about. That's not going to take terribly long to do. But what I will do, I'll also add a few additional bits where we look at how you might use a signal generator to, to try and uh, uh, trace the signal path through um, some kind of uh, circuit. So I've chosen a radio because that's what my interest really is in electronics. Um, so let's start by having a look at the circuit diagram of the radio in question. OK, let's make a start by looking at the circuit diagram. We're going to do some signal tracing on. Now this is a late 60s, early 70s Soviet era, era uh, shortwave receiver. Uh, probably looks horrendously complicated. We can simplify it at a stroke by removing all those um, additional bits on the left hand side there because the um, capacitors and coils for the front end and for the oscillator are switched in mechanically and there's only ever one set in circuit at a time so obviously hopefully looks a bit more straightforward. So we're at, when we're actually doing the tracing we're only going to be seeing the uh, trace side of the circuit board um, but uh, just for your information that's what the circuit board looked like when it uh, when I first got hold of it. I've since uh, done some extensive recapping there is a video on this, I'll put a link at the top there for you to have a look at that if you so desire. Um, and what I really like about this of course are these um, very 1960s space age looking transistors um, and these uh, are of course germanium PNP transistors which makes this a, a bit of an interesting circuit. Um, since we're more likely to encounter NPN transistors of the silicon variety these days. But these Soviet era transistors are still working fine and this radio I should say was actually uh, made in Latvia um, at, the, uh, at the factory that uh, produced radios for many many years. So okay let's look at the circuit. So in the centre there transistors 1 and 2 form the oscillator and I guess a bit of a buffer amplifier and the relevant bit of the um, coils are switched in to make sure you're on the, the oscillators on the appropriate frequency. It's a single stage superhead and that means the oscillator frequency is uh, mixed with the incoming signal to produce a, an IF at around about 450-ish kilohertz. So transistors 3 and 4 uh, essentially form the front end and the mixer for the oscillator uh, and then transistor 4 there drives um, fairly lengthy IF stage where there's a number of IF uh, transformers acting as, uh, as filters and transistors T5 and T6 are also involved in that and um, there's an output um, there that eventually feeds the transformer which goes into diode 2 there which forms an envelope detector and it's at that point that we convert um, the uh, what is still essentially an RF signal at an IF frequency um, into audio that's passed to a two-stage driver which is transistors 7 and 8 uh, there's a volume control at the start of that chain and also at the base of T8 there's a another variable resistor which essentially rolls off the high frequency and forms a, a tone control. Those two transistors uh, drive uh, an output stage consisting of a pair of transistors in push-pull mode and two transformers to um, uh, set up the phasing for those two um, transistors who work correctly and eventually we drive a speaker. So that's the general arrangement of the radio. That's probably quite enough circuit diagram for one day so let's um, now actually uh, have a look at the bottom of the circuit board okay here's the back of the radio then and I've got uh, just got it tuned to a uh, one of the shortwave bands um, 
and oh, obviously away from a station. If I touch the antenna, you can hopefully hear the the crackle there of the, of the noise coming in. Uh, so I've got signal generator set up uh, to generate one kilohertz. And the screen looks like that, and I've got the negative attached to, if you like, the what effectively is the ground here. It's actually connected to positive, and I'm going to just feed the signal in through a 300. Uh, nano farad capacitor just to um, protect the signal generator from any uh, any DC voltage. So I've just written on as best I can the transistor numbers just to give you a, the, the general gist. So here are the two uh, transistors that are the output drive and if I touch the base of one of those you probably can't hear that but there is sure enough most definitely there a one kilohertz tone. Now these transistors are expecting um, a much higher level drive than the uh, the 10 millivolts that I'm giving it but if we go back to one of the driver transistors here so this is transistor 7 and that's the base of transistor 7 you can hopefully hear pretty clearly there most definitely a one kilohertz tone and then if we go a bit further back in the circuit so if we go back uh, to say transistor 6 which is in the IF there's the base now there is a bit of a crackle when we touch it but there's it just takes away the noise so there's something's happening but we can't hear a tone and if you're um, into radio you now of course know exactly what's going on here because we've now gone beyond that diode which does the envelope detection um, the bit of the circuit we're in now won't respond to an audio um, frequency tone so let's go up to uh, 455 kilohertz so the screen now looks like so and let's see what happens when we apply that kind of um, let's go a bit further back along the um, chain here so there's the base of transistor 5 in the IF chain and yet there's definitely a crackle but we can't hear anything and again if you're into radio you're probably now screaming at the um, screen that uh, we need to do something else so what we need to do is you need to modulate that 455 kilohertz with some kind of tone so let's enable modulation so that the screen will now look like that so we've now got a what 455 kilohertz carrier if you like being modulated at 50% by 1 kilohertz so let's now put that onto the base of transistor 5 and as you can see let's come back here to the base of transistor 6 as you can see we've got lots and lots of 1 kilohertz tone coming through and benefiting from the full the full amount of application on transistor 3 which is the very beginning there's the base and you can hear it there too and in fact if we go over to the, the transistors that are in the oscillator it does make a noise but it isn't actually coming through so yeah so there's the audio chain and I think the important thing to note here is that if I obviously it works rather well here But if I go to the driver transistor in the audio section, nothing appears to be happening. And that's of course because the clue is in the name, we're in the audio section, and effectively this is 455 kilohertz, and as far as that section is concerned, it's way above any kind of frequency response that um, uh, that would be able to cope with. So what we've been doing there is just tracing back through the stages of the, um, the radio using various frequencies to do that. Now the whole point of this video originally was to actually see if we could get the digital tweezers to uh, use their tone. Now um, that's something I need to try and to do that I need to change the um, available frequencies in here because by default the frequency, the sine wave output frequency is 10 kilohertz which is just about audible but it's, it's very high so what we really want is a tenth of that about one kilohertz so to do that we need to separate the tweezers from the head 
uh, we then need to get the uh, USB lead that clips onto the head like so. So we've now got the head and USB lead and now we'll take that to the computer. Okay, having attached the tweezers head to the USB port, we plug it in and it should just simply come up as a USB drive. And you can see here this has come up with the, that name at the top there and the Windows has given it the um, drive letter F. Uh, that contains just one file called cal. So first thing I recommend you do with that file is take a copy and save it somewhere so you've always got the original. That's what I did. Um, then I made use of the Windows Open With function so I can edit this file. Now it just needs to be a simple text editor. So in my case I've used uh, Windows Notepad which is more than good enough. So using the Open With command, right clicking on the file and using that, uh, it opens up a text file that looks something like this and all we need to do is we don't need to worry about all the numbers at the bottom all we're going to do is alter line 5 now I've already done it here I'll just highlight it yellow for you there so originally I think that was set to 0 so I've set it to 3 which is equal to 1 kilohertz now the astute amongst you will notice I've also adjusted user frequency on line 7 to equal 4 um, that's just a uh, gives me another frequency option but uh, the one I'm going to make use of today is uh, the sine frequency option equals 3 which should give us a 1 kilohertz signal sine wave. Uh, you then save the file um, straight back onto the head of the tweezers and then you can eject the disk and uh, connect them back up and let's, um, let's see what we've got. Okay, here we are back with the radio, and first thing to say is to verify there that the display now says 1 kilohertz sign. And this is obviously only going to work in the audio sections of the radio, so there's no point in worrying about the IF strip anymore. But let's start with, um, with the driver transistor here, which is the base is just there. So I'm going to put positive going um, connection on there, and I can hear a tone already. Now that bit of trace there is effectively the ground, so I'm going to just uh, try and connect that to ground somewhere. So I think you can hear rather well that that certainly is injecting the signal into the base of that driver transistor. And if I go to the output transistors, and with these legs like this I should be able to do a similar kind of thing. So there's a base and if I can reach across to uh, one of the ground planes, I'll do my best to do that. Let's try it like that. Yeah, in fact that's, work, that's working even better than the um, uh, signal generator was. I maybe hadn't picked up the, the ground quite so well. So yes, we can see there that, as expected, that does indeed, the tweezers will indeed work as a signal generator. and. Why would I do that rather than just using my normal signal generator? Well, if you're working on a small circuit board, it's extremely handy to be able to uh, drop the probes in. You can actually you could actually reach into the leg of a transistor. Now I've got plenty of room on this, you know, 50 year old circuit board to be able to do that. But on more modern devices, certainly more modern portable transistor radios, it might be quite handy to have such a, a small um, if you like, way of connecting to the components to feed a signal in. Now what this won't do, it won't produce a modulated signal, so we obviously can't check the IF, but certainly from a, a normal amplifier point of view, it should be perfectly good at allowing you to feed a signal in. And uh, you may recall from the uh, configuration file just now, I have also set the user sine wave to, to 500 hertz, and we should be able to to demonstrate that if I um, just drop that onto there and find that ground again. So there's a 500 hertz signal which would also be perfectly good for um, checking the input stages. Let's just try um, the base of that drive at that uh, output transistor again. 
there you go so it's demonstrating the signal path works now if you're at this point thinking that actually that was quite loud and um, that was sorry that wasn't very loud using the normal signal generator why is it much louder with this well don't forget on the other one i was using a, a capacitor to um, isolate the signal generator from uh, the actual circuit which i'm not doing here so there's a great deal more signal getting through to that transistor okay hope that's made some sense okay well there you go i uh, managed to make uh, good use of the digital tweezers um, they certainly would work um, as a signal injector uh, certainly on audio stages they do obviously have their limitations but you've hopefully also seen a, a, a signal generator used as a as a bit of a, a fault finding tool so i hope that's been useful um, thanks very much for watching if you've liked it please click the thumbs up it costs you nothing really helps the channel It'd be great if you could subscribe and if you click the bell icon you'll also get notified each time new videos come out i try and produce one video a week i won't promise i can always do that but i've managed to achieve that for the last two years so hopefully i can continue to do it um, thanks for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video